we're working on the principle that 400 kilograms um, of this enriched, highly enriched uranium is missing, um, then I'd say maybe about one to two Hiroshima size bombs. But I think a really important thing to remember is that this is not going to bring about the apocalypse, right? It's not going to necessarily bring about nuclear war. Um, and the reason why um, Iran wants this nuclear weapon is not actually to use it, but to prevent others from intervening. But Iran has the ca ca capacity to start enriching uranium again for a possible bomb within a matter of months. Uh, that is according to the head of the UN's nuclear watchdog, Rafael Grossi, head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, said the US strikes on three Iranian sites last weekend had caused severe but not total damage. Um, he's contradicting what Donald Trump has said, which is that Iran's nuclear facilities were totally obliterated. Well, Dr. Becky Alexis Martin, a lecturer in peace, science and technology and a nuclear warfare expert, joins us now. Um, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Alexis Martin. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me join you today. I know that you have um, written at some length and studied um, what the evidence shows us about Iran's quest for a nuclear bomb. I mean, what do you make of that warning from Rafael Grossi? Do you think that Iran, despite the attacks on its nuclear sites, does still have the capability to put a nuclear bomb together uh, comparatively quickly within months? Um, yes, I do. So the International Atomic Energy Agency, um, which is what Rossi is obviously the director of, um, has an amazing international team of scientists um, who have, um, you know, decades of expertise and knowledge in this area. Um, so I very much do trust his um, perspective. Um, also, from my own kind of understanding um, of um, nuclear proliferation, um, if you've got the enriched, um, the highly enriched uranium, over 60%, and um, the process afterwards is far simpler. Um, and I know that the International Atomic Energy Agency can't currently locate about 400 kilograms of this 60% enriched uranium. Um, just three days ago, um, inspectors were denied access to damaged sites. Um, and also there was no um, kind of um, radiation leak or record of radiation, um, which can be monitored remotely. So you can have remote monitoring of this. Um, so I think in all likelihood um, that the stockpile may have been, or part of the stockpile um, may have been relocated prior to the um, recent strikes. Yes, yeah, so um, we saw those satellite images that showed this large convoy near the Fordo nuclear facility um, just a couple of days before um, the site was bombed by the US. Do you then uh, think that it was at that stage that some of this enriched uranium was es essentially moved away before the devastating attacks? Um, possibly. So it could have been condensed down, it could have been converted into uranium oxide powder or metal, um, and it could have been stored. So they might have used um, BU transport casks, which are the kind of, they're these special casks for radioactive materials that are like built to survive crashes and fire, um, and escorted that material off site. Um, although I wonder whether the um, convoy that was seen by um, geospatial monitoring was actually a decoy. Um, and I think it's more likely that they may have transported this material at night um, and I suspect that um, because we don't know where this material is it's probably somewhere kind of remote or mountainous um, I can't tell you that's where my expertise ends sadly um, but um, but yeah I think that it is possible and um, we know of course that Iran has used these kind of hardened truck convoys to move things like centrifuges and missiles and nuclear parts to and fro from like Fordo and um, from Nantan from Natanz and um, rather um, in the past so so I don't think um, I don't think it's beyond reasonable um, conceivable likelihood, I do think that he's correct. So when President Trump uh, insists that these sites were completely obliterated and we saw, didn't we, um, those news conferences uh, from him and the mm -hmm. Defence Secretary showing the scale of the damage to sites like Fordo, um, uh, are you saying, well, yes, they did a huge amount of damage, but the, the, the key materials had already probably been moved out? 
Well, you see, this is the issue, and um, you've got it spot on. Um, there's the challenge, but obviously there's the infrastructure to move the materials and also the knowledge of how to make a nuclear weapon remains. You know, they've still got nuclear scientists, they've still got their own experts who can restart that programme. Um, another interesting conundrum is that obviously these bunker buster bombs are huge and they cause a devastating amount of damage, but much of these facilities um, would have been underground. Um, and so it's quite difficult, even um, with with remotely sensed imagery to kind of really estimate how much damage has been done. It's clearly, for the above ground facilities, they've been completely demolished, um, but we're still not completely sure. Um, and we know, obviously, that Trump, he's a very bombastic leader. He likes to, you know, he likes to lean into his people um, and to kind of reassure them. Um, and so I suspect that um, there's um, an element of kind of refusing to admit failure on his part. So uh, even though many nuclear scientists we know were killed by the Israelis in earlier strikes on Iran, um, given that you clearly believe that enough scientists uh, are still um, active in the country and that they may well have this enriched uranium, I mean, could the Iranians, I mean, what sort of a weapon do you think they could still produce? Um, well, working on the principle that 400 kilograms um, of this enriched, highly enriched uranium is missing, um, then I'd say maybe about one to two Hiroshima-sized bombs. But I think a really important thing to remember is that this is not going to bring about the apocalypse, right? It's not going to necessarily bring about nuclear war. Um, and the reason why um, Iran wants this nuclear weapon is not actually to use it, but to prevent others from intervening in their obviously very authoritarian regime. Um, so we've got this kind of issue whereby, um, you know, the Ayatollah, he feels threatened, he feels vulnerable, rightly so. Um, and um, so the idea of kind of possessing a nuclear weapon, that gives him this kind of um, feeling of power, you know, it makes it harder to kind of take action, similarly to, for example, um, if we think of the Rus Russo-Ukrainian crisis and why it's quite hard to deal with Russia. Um, so I don't think there's intent to use the weapon, but I think there's intent to try and gain power in that kind of Middle Eastern front. Joe Robertson is Conservative MP for Isle of Wight East and a member of the Health and Social Care Committee. Hello, Joe. Hi, Carol. Great to be with you. Thanks so much for joining us. And Helen Maguire is the Lib Dem MP for Epsom and Yule and Lib Dem spokesperson for Defence. Hello, Helen. Hi, Carol. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, Helen, you are the Lib Dem spokesperson for Defence. Um, do you think that what we're hearing from uh, the IAEA, the official body looking into this, um, means that in fact Donald Trump has, has over-exaggerated the extent of the damage to those nuclear sites? Well, it's obviously incredibly uh, concerning to hear this uh, report at the moment. And obviously, we've got two differing opinions. So what we do need to do is find, you know, get the bottom of the facts and find out exactly uh, what is true. I mean, we definitely don't want uh, Iran to um, be, you know, being able to have nuclear weapons. Uh, that's absolutely not the, the future that we want. So I think what we need to do right now is establish exactly uh, what the truth is. Joe, I mean, it, it, it's a fair point, isn't it, um, that Israel uh, has its own nuclear deterrent. Um, but do you think that the British government should have uh, openly supported these US strikes on Iran, um, given that the prime minister himself said that he did not think that Iran should be allowed to develop nuclear weapons? I think the prime minister and government are broadly uh, treading the right line on this. We plainly don't want to be dragged into something that wasn't of our making, you know, in terms of the timing. Clearly, we do not want Iran to have nuclear weapons, but I'm unaware there was ever any strategy to go and bomb those sites. Uh, and we don't want to be dragged in uh, sort of by, by others. But, you know, the US is our um, one of our biggest, probably our biggest military ally. Um, Donald Trump happens to be president. They, they did what they did. Uh, and hopefully now that is uh, the end end of it. Um, but going back to your original question, yeah, Donald Trump is Donald Trump. I, I think we have to take with a pinch of salt what he says about the success or otherwise of this um, and wait and see what, what the evidence says. <laughs> 